This is part one of a video to make a folding wine table. This table is being made out of reclaimed chestnut. And for this video, I did create a prototype uh, out of plywood, and we will reference that during the uh, build. Uh, I'm not sure how many parts this will come out to, but please enjoy. And uh, any questions, comment below, and thank you. Okay, so we're all set up to get started. Uh, I have pieces cut out. I have an 18 by 18 board that's going to be, we're going to cut into a circle for the top. I've got four legs that are one and a half inches wide, and right now they're 30 inches long. I'm going to have to cut those to 28, which is the final size. I've got two two inch by varying length pieces at the extreme left of the picture. That will be the cross pieces for the legs. They'll be cut to size later. I've got two pieces that are two inches by six inches that will be used to support the leg pivot. And then I got a piece that has been cut out into a, almost an L shape with a curved top that will be used for a stop okay, for the movable The prototype leg. for the table had a diameter of 16 inches for the tabletop. We decided that the final table is going to have a little bit of a bigger diameter. It's going to be around 17. This blank is 18 by 18. Um, so what I've got to do is I've got to find the center. And the easiest way to find the center, even though this isn't a perfect square, is to diagonals from the corners. And it's important that we do that because we're going to need those lines when we lay out the location for the leg supports and the uh, stop on this. So what you want to do is you want to decide which side of the blank is going to be the bottom. And this was much nicer match up top. So this is going to be the bottom uh, of, the, of the board. And then we're just going to draw lines corner to corner to find the center. It's not critical that we get it exact. because the blank is well oversized. But we are definitely going to use these lines to lay out not only the, the fixtures on the bottom, but it's how we're going to lay out the holes for the glasses and the uh, opening for the handle. Alright, so I've marked the X, now we need to drill a hole for this locating pin for the router. One eighth bit, you don't want to go all the way through as I have done before. Then you have a hole in your top. But I've marked it. The other thing you need to do is put some kind of sacrificial board underneath. Uh, hopefully this won't move too much. Um, otherwise you'll end up cutting through the bench top. So what we're going to use is a plunge router and we're going to do this incrementally. Now the way this works is these holes give you the diameter of the circle and it's based on having a quarter inch bit in the router. I don't have a quarter inch bit so I have actually a 3 16 bit or 5 30 seconds and so I'm going to actually since it's smaller than a quarter I'm going to use it a setting that's going to give me a 17 inch hole and it'll be a hair over 17. Okay I think we're ready to go let's give it a shot.
What we'll do is we'll keep lowering the bit until we get the circle cut out. And of course now we got a big mess, but we got a really nice circle. And we were close enough that the whole frame fell apart, so that's good. The legs, right now the blanks are 30 inches long. I need to cut them to 28, but I want them to all be the same size. So what I'm going to do on the miter saw is I'm going to set a stop at 28 inches. And then I'm going to cut off the least pretty end off each. Alright, the next step is to pick out which end is going to be the top and we're going to round over the tops of the legs. And since the legs are one and a half inches wide, we're going to make a mark three quarters down from the end in the middle and using a compass set at three quarters of an inch, use that as a center point and round over. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch down. I use a centering rule just in case they're a little off the one and a half. Okay, I set my compass to three quarters, but I didn't tighten it up yet because easiest way to verify that is to take the compass and put it on there and if it hits the edge it's right. So I'm just going to take it, draw my arc. So we've got the line. We want to cut to the outside of the line because we'll clean it up with a sander. Dust collection. Saw. going to take and we're going to round over these ends using this oscillating belt uh, sander. It also does an oscillating spindles. This is one of the greatest tools. It's very inexpensive compared to a lot of tools and you can buy a lot of tools for three, four times the price that just do the spindles. 
and I've had this for over 10 years, and if it died tomorrow, it owes me nothing, I go buy another one. Um, it's, it's that good of a tool. Um, but you'll see in a second. thing we have to do is decide which legs are going to be the pivoting legs and which legs are going to be the fixed legs. Um, the reason is that the fixed legs are going to have a quarter inch diameter hole drilled for a carriage bolt. The other, the, the movable leg, is going to have a half inch hole drilled so that we can put a dowel in and that's what will move against the stop. To hold, to hold the leg in place when it's open. And once you decide that, we're just going to take it over to the drill press and drill the holes. All right, so we're going to we've picked the two legs that are going to be the uh, fixed, and I'm going to drill the quarter inch hole. And what you're going to do is you're going to use the point used for the compass to be this, the point to drill the hole through. I've got a backer board so that I don't blow out the back when the drill bit comes through. Okay, so now before I drill a half inch hole, I have actually four holes to drill with the uh, quarter inch drill bit. And that is going to be um, 11 and a half in inches down from the top. And that is where the pivot is, as you can see on the prototype. So I, I, it took me a lot of futz in to figure out where that pivot point had to be so I get good balance. And with the 28 inch legs, on this it happened to be 11 and a half inches down. So I'm gonna measure 11 and a half inches down, center it, and then we're gonna drill four holes. So what I did is I marked, I marked these on the um, the permanent leg. I want the holes to be in the exact same place on the two legs that are together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp each of these to their respective uh, leg so that the pivot hole is in the exact same place on both. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the bottoms A and B so that they will always uh, be put assembled together. All right, so I have them clamped together. I'm going to set them on the on the drill press. through both pieces and then we'll mark them. <laughs> 